This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. So today we have a freezer here that's not working correctly. It said it was not running on the inside and right now it is, but it's not running here right now. This is a pretty good size walk-in freezer. So we got one evaporator and condenser here and we've got another one right here. So we're going to see what's going on currently. It's uh, just not running at all. So let's get into it and take a look, see what's going on. All right, so I see two bad things in here. I see we've got some wasps that they're gonna get their wings burned off with a hand torch. And I can see a crap ton of oil all in here, which is not a good sign. This is not a very old unit. I'm gonna have to see where that leaks at. I should never have that much in there. And if it was a leak and somebody didn't clean up their mess, shame on them. So let's burn the wings off those and kill them. I like wasp spray, but with the torch, usually will take their wings out and that's the end of them bye bye little little wasp it's not in the middle of a defrost that's good well where did that leak come from do we have any leakage around that little stem there or is it over here somewhere hopefully it's an actual new leak and not some leftover crap that somebody left in there I have never been here before, so I don't know what it usually looks like. That don't look good from what I'm seeing from here. Look at that. Not good. Gotta watch out for things rubbing against other things. Looks to me like the line was screwed right in the middle. why when you're in your startups you got to make sure this stuff is not rubbing into things so there's 21 pounds gone very preventable I am probably going to repair that line sleeve it and repair it because there's nothing much wrong with it we'll just uh, jacket it probably a piece of quarter inch and just put a, a breeze around the both corners so these are Technically wire strippers, but they sold them as uh, cap tube cutters, which does a pretty good job. So we'll cut it there, we'll cut it on the other side, and we'll braise it together. Got a piece of quarter inch here, which we'll, we've already cleaned up here and here. We'll slide it in there at least about an inch. Same thing on that side. We'll do a little bit of a smash on the side with my linesman's, and then uh, braise her up. Uh, no sense of replacing a switch it's only probably a year two years maybe old but here's this compressor can't looks like it's hard to read looks like 20 so maybe it's two years old something like that so yeah the switch ain't bad uh the system shut down on low pressure switch cut out so it wasn't pulled into a negative um probably gonna skip running the dryer we are swamp ass busy gonna pull a vacuum on it and move on down the road check all of our caps make sure they're not loose they have a tendency to be left loose for the factory and we go from there actually that's a low pressure switch so yeah it cut off uh, when I got down to down to pressure I thought that was fan cycle they have a headmaster back here in the back so yeah it shut off if it was a uh, you know five year plus old switch I probably would have changed it not that big of a deal. Ain't the prettiest thing in the world, but you know, look at all the other braze joints. There's bunches of them. What's two more? Like I said before in the past, I got POE oil inside the zoom spout oiler. So we'll just put a little bit of oil on either side of that. Spin it a little bit. Make sure it gets on the back side of the flare. And now I'll tighten her up. So. actually wire tie that to the wire so they don't wiggle together it actually takes the vibration out of it I always like to put that loop closest to one of the anchor points 
Make sure this up here ain't touching anything. Should be pretty good to go. It's one of the nice ones that actually has an outlet there for us. Able to put our things right here on the ladder. Pull her down nice and quick. Now this does have the solenoid on the inside. So that's why we're pulling on both sides of the uh, piping, which I'm not climbing at the top of the ladder. This building literally is that tall there. So you need a, at least a 10 foot ladder to reach it. So we're gonna pull our back down there. We don't have to go for perfect. Either you trust or you don't trust these uh, sight glasses. And uh, we're still green even before we're pulling a vacuum. The uh, compressor might need a couple squirts of oil. Hard to tell since it's sealed. Um, I wouldn't say we lost a bunch since it was on the suction side. I'm gonna see if I can clean some of this crap up so that the next guy doesn't think we have a current leak. Makes it a little easier for him. You can see how fast it's pulling down. Like I've said in the past, that's the newest for, uh, blue vac, which either that one or the small one both have pretty much the similar same feature as far as if you're using the app. But uh, the reason why I got that one uh, wasn't because my other one had gone bad. Uh, I've had it for over 10 years, but because I, I just wanted the wireless and I know how reliable the blue vac stuff is, which I've got that at True Tech Tools. So make sure you use the uh, promo code survival at checkout to save yourself 8%. Uh, pretty much everything I've gotten here is from True Tech. The blue hose is here, uh, the, recover, or the vacuum pump. The uh, unit is pulling down nice and quick, which is the whole reason why I like these hoses. And uh, we should be good to go here shortly. And with us knowing that it holds 21 pounds, which is always a big reason why I always push for people to put that on there, uh, this should make recharging fairly quick. Now, because we were doing that kind of hazardly, the vacuum pump fell. The hoses caught it before it hit the ground. Lost a little bit of oil on the uh, out of the pump because it's kind of wide open, but didn't destroy anything. So they're freaking strong to say the least. Uh, still at about a thousand, a little bit longer to go and uh, we can get started here. Once I get this stuff out of the way, I'm gonna spray it's either brake cleaner or something in there. Coil's looking pretty clean, which is good. And holy crap, how long has that been down? Wow, so we're gonna vacuum that off. Probably not the greatest thing in the world, but it's gonna work for now. I need my ladder. All right, we're gonna put this into a defrost, which will allow it to pump down. I don't like just turning it off and then flipping it back on and you have all that refrigerant that uh, comes flying back at the compressor. And I don't get the fan off, so it'll make it a little easier to sweep that off. Cause that's pretty bad. Works out kind of good having the cordless. Wow. Now my brush probably would get it pretty good. And it's still caked on the inside there. But what it's going to allow me to do is get uh, my uh, washer, my portable washer, my uh, portable blaster. I'll grab a five gallon bucket of water and we'll wash this right out. Otherwise, I'm gonna waste a lot of water trying to get this off. My goodness, that's ridiculous. The uh, cottonwood around here has been flying for a while and that's just making it super inefficient. Super inefficient. Which makes me think that other one might've been down for a little while, like I said. Still green side glass. We are super busy today. We have been for the last few days. 95 to 100 degrees in Ohio don't usually happen a bunch. And it's the beginning of it. And, and just like everybody else, we don't have enough people. Honestly, have enough here for a wool blanket. That is crazy. That is so crazy. I put it way out here, that way it's quite a distance away from the unit so it doesn't get sucked right back up into it. It really didn't plug my filter up on my uh, vacuum cleaner. Well, unfortunately, the water is all the way on the other side of the building. So we're just gonna five gallon bucket it over and uh, use the portable blaster. I was hoping to get in and get out, but that's not gonna happen. Good little deal here, a little portable blaster, man. I'll tell you what, I've talked about this thing a 100,000 times. I'm just so happy with what all it can do and how cheap it is and it's really affordable and does a real good job it's been holding up i know 
One of the guys that watched me said he had a couple issues with his. He got a hold of them, boom, got it swapped out. You know, nothing's perfect. If it's made by man, it's not perfect. So, anyhow, we'll purge that out. There we go. And uh, we'll hook up our hose. There we go. Plenty of hose to get over here and get the work done. There we go. A little bit tighter pattern. Blast through the coil a little bit better. The only thing really nice about the aluminum here is pretty much once you get the big chunks off, you can just shoot right through the thing and right on it goes through. Pretty good about not holding on to it. So we'll flip this back on here in a second. And if we got any water left over, we'll wash the other one too. But yeah, she's just clean that right out, no problem at all. Working good. There we go. And you can see right through the coil. And we've got about two gallons and a half left. Got the clock back set correctly. Should be able to kick her on. Release and go. That's a lot better airflow coming through there. Holy crap. Now we need to watch our sight glass, make sure it ain't all flashing off now that, you know, the coil's clean and moving air through. But let's go ahead and get this one done while we're at it. Yeah, just a light, light uh, miss is all it's gonna take to get this thing clean. Looks like we're stalling out around the 500 mark. That's a big receiver. Get a valve off and uh, see what she does here. You know, we have to pull a little bit longer, but you know, like I said, most of that's refrigerant. We'll watch that thing, and that's why I like the uh, Micron's a second gauge, top right corner, 5.3. It starts slowing down and down and down and down, then you know you're just boiling off moisture and it's not a leak, but that's where we're at. So hit it with a little bit of Master Blaster, PB Blaster. Let's see if we can get that grease crap off of everything and rinse it away with our sprayer since we have it conveniently available. The only reason why I'm doing this is so we can tell if it's a new leak or not. Otherwise, yeah, it wouldn't make much of a difference, but I, I get myself, usually I get pretty upset when you go there and you're trying to find out if it's a new leak or not and it's an old leak and because they left a big old mess everywhere. We got the hacking pump unhooked. Got the gauge unhook, micron gauge, got the Schrader cores in there. We've dumped about 13 pounds or so in there. We're going to flip it on here in a second. I think I might even just go ahead and stop now and then we'll feed it in through the suction after that. Yep, there, just release the side glass. We was able to get all that crap loose. You can see how that's flopping like it is right there. We're gonna wire tie that to the uh, wires there and that way it won't sit there and wiggle that's just gonna break again that's kind of a kind of a crappy place for that extra weight in the middle there but I didn't 100% believe them 17 pounds so I heated it up a little bit you can see where that's at it sounds like 21 is gonna be about right that puts us right now currently about right here so 18 19 20 21 four or five pounds should put us about in there That'll give us plenty for winter, and uh, with the way this thing's solenoid is on the inside, like most of them are, it should uh, be able to handle it no problem. I just basically put it into a pump down. We'll go ahead and run it uh, a little bit longer and get that in there and uh, wrap this one up. Now by putting that into a pump down, basically defrost, it pumped down and shut off where it should, which means that pressure switch is receiving uh, accurate readings down to the suction line where we made the repair so we know that's open we're right in there now at the 20 pound area it's definitely warm out here today i think about 90 to 95 area so we're uh looking pretty good i'll make sure my pressure switch kicks on and off like it should it seemed like it had to go a little higher than what we traditionally would set it at uh, normally around here we go for about 23 to 25 degrees usually around the 23 or I'm sorry, 23 PSI, which is usually around negative nine in area. Let's go ahead and put it in defrost here one more time. Make sure it pumps down. About head pressure skyrocketing up. It's dropping like it should. It's a little more.
more responsive than the other ones. You can hear the compressor there, which is scroll, kick out, which ain't too uncommon. That might be why they uh, have it set a little higher than what I normally would see. What I didn't care for was the pressure that it came on at. So we're gonna put the analog gauge on there. Currently, we're static pressure-wise about 23, which is where I normally would bring on my 404 freezers. So I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna adjust my cut in. Oh, she's barely touched it. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, it's going all the way up there to 35 something before it even comes on. That's way too high. You gotta lower that some. Unless this thing's completely out of whack. Can't hardly read it. Let's see what the heck, which one's which. Differential's down here, so cut in should be right there, and I got it pretty low. That should be coming on. What the crap. We got a time delay here. This is what's screwing me over, making me think that my switch wasn't making. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bypass that until I'm done, then we'll put it back. That just keeps it from short cycling. So we got it tuned in there, it seems. Let's go ahead and double check her here on camera for you. She's kicking in right now. Down there, five pounds area, two pounds, somewhere at ballpark. And we seem to be holding there pretty good. We're not creeping back up because that solenoid's in there at the coil. We're gonna release it. it should come on about 23-ish. So that should put us in a good area. We'll go ahead and set this up for today's time. 40 minutes with a termination, no termination. All right, well, so that one's running. And that one there's running. So we are good to go. Nice green sight glass. Pressure switch has been tweaked to accept uh, the pressures we normally work at. I got thinking about the way the defrost termination was removed and there's chances are they probably had problems with defrost, which is probably why it's at 40 minutes and they got rid of the termination. So there's probably a reason behind that. Same thing with that one over there. The uh, length of time is a little higher. It's a 45 minutes area. Not changing anything. This is my first trip here. There's usually reasons for things and unless somebody notes it in the inside, I'm not gonna change anything. Uh, other than that, we got her pulled down. If it had been exposed for days and days and days, then yeah, I would have changed the filter dryer. Under the circumstances, we've got to get going. We just don't have time right now. Right now, it's fires everywhere trying to put them all out. Anytime you open a system, it's supposed to replace it. We're green there, so either that side glass works or it don't. So it's working. We're going to let it roll at that. If they have an issue and it starts to turn yellow, we can always pump it down, chop it out, and replace it. So if you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And until next time, guys, we will catch you on the next one. Later.